Hey guys, I want to go over how migrations work in Typeform because they're pretty sweet. So what are migrations in the first place? Well, here is an entity I have right here called user. And let's say I have my first name here and I want to change that to something like username, right? And then save it. I could just use one of Typeform's features. If we look in Orm config, there's this thing called synchronize. And so what that'll do is it will update your database to make sure it matches this entity. Because before it had a first name field, right? And now that first name field is gone and now there's a username field. So it, it needs to update the database and Typeform will handle this for you. And that's fine. But in production, it's usually not good to have Typeform automatically do it. Because if they do anything wrong, um, you just lose data. And that can be really detrimental. So what you want to do is something called migrations. So the way you can do these in Typeform is the CLI helps you a lot. So in my ORM config, you'll notice I have uh, these configurations are important. So we're pointing to our entities folder and our migrations folder. So I have just like an empty folder here called migrations. Uh, I guess it, I think it created it for me or maybe I created it, but it'll also get auto generated. So if you just type MPX uh, Typeform, you can see all the different options that are available to you. And by the way, I am running this right now on my boilerplate on uh, branch seven, uh, if you want to follow along. But also this works for any Typeform project. So what I can do is these four commands right here are the ones I use the most. So first off, if you want to just create your own migrations, what you'll do is you could just do MPX Typeform and let's clear this, npx type arm migrations, and then not to generate, but create. Um, and then this dash n at the end, you then specify the name. And so after that, what's gonna happen is it's gonna create a file in your migrations folder with the timestamp and the dash and then the name. And basically you now have this bare bones um, class right here where you can uh, do stuff. So they give you this thing called query runner and you can do query runner dot query. And then here you have to write raw SQL. So right now I don't think they have anything um, to help you out with this. I think that's something they're wanting to add in the future. But for example, I would just say alter, uh, you know, users table, um, rename that one field to the other field. So I would just type this in SQL myself and then I would await it like that. And then you can also do the reverse of how you would put the table back um, if you wanted to. And then after you do this, how would you actually run this uh, migration? Well, there's a couple ways. The one I like to do is I'm usually using this in conjunction with a uh, server. So for example, here is my GraphQL uh, or uh, Yoga, GraphQL Yoga server. And uh, you'll notice I am creating a connection and this is a type ORM connection and then I'm starting my server. And what I can do is right before I can grab my connection here and I can just say connection run migrations. And I can await this and I just need to make this asynchronous now. So now what's gonna happen is it's gonna run my migrations every time before the server starts. And now don't worry, this only runs the migrations it hasn't already run. So that's one option of doing it. The other option, if you noticed in the, uh, right here, you can actually just run this with uh, migrations run. And that works just fine from the command line. But I wanna show you uh, one of my favorite things about this. So you guys saw that we just renamed this field to uh, username. So Typeform actually knows about this. So uh, you notice how one of them was called uh, migrations uh, generate, right? What it'll do is it'll actually compare your database with what your entities are, and it'll write the migrations for you. Um, and just by default, for whatever reason, uh, you can't just run it like this. Uh, you actually need to run this with TS node. So I, I had tried doing it like this because the other commands work. Um, so if that happens to you, you just have to run TS node in front of this and you have to get uh, type orm from node modules. So node modules dot bin and then that's currently where my, uh, oops, there we go. And then I want to do migrations 
generate test two. So I just had to put TS node in front and then run it on the executable uh, type form. And then that will work for me. And oh, it just didn't like that I uh, I didn't do anything with these. So I'm just going to just remove this file real quick. OK, so it added this new migration over here. And now you can see it's basically pre-filled with some data. So it looks like uh, there's some something wrong with vote, um, or at least it didn't sync up with our table. But this is basically all the changes they would make to sync your database. So you can now go in and manually look at them, how they work, and then get rid of the ones you don't really care about, or uh, you know just the ones you want to happen. So for example, I might come over here and I'm like, I don't really care about the vote. I didn't change anything with vote. I don't want to see anything happen. Uh, just care about my user. So we'll notice there's two commands. So it says it wants to drop the first name and then add the username. So a lot of times um, you may only want to do additions and not kill any tables. That's a common use case. So I could just come in here and just like, I don't want to do any kind of dropping. Uh, I'm only going to add uh, back. So to go down, I'm just going to do something like that, right? To drop the username. Um, but when adding this, I'm not going to get rid of the first name column. But again, you can do whatever you want, right? But uh, it just gives you the option. So a lot of times, this is what I end up doing. And then I'll just come in and tweak the SQL that they uh, auto-generate. So that's pretty nice. So just to wrap up, you can either create the migrations yourself with just the uh, create function. Uh, or you can do generate, which will auto-compare for you. And then it'll be put into the migrations folder or whatever you specify in the CLI in your ORM config. And then to run it, you can either run it over here um, when your application server starts or from the command line uh, using migrations run. So if we wanted to, we could just run that fix we just did. So type ORM and I just want to do migrations run and now it should update uh, okay, it looks like I need to just go ahead and run this with TS node as well. Um, or maybe there is a type error. Okay, so it looks like, and this is what it looks like if you get an error. Um, so the username contains null values and I didn't make it nullable. So if we come over here, we can fix that. And we can just say nullable is true. And then you'll notice like nothing's changing here. So I could either change the SQL or I could delete this. And now it's going to remake that migration file. And it'll have uh, nullable in there. So you can come look at this. Again, I don't really care about voting. And I don't want to drop my first name. And I can just leave the down if I don't plan on changing it, or I could change this however I like. Uh, if you're not familiar with how down works, this is for reverting back after you do any type of migrations if you wanted to. Okay, so now we have uh, this, and it's not specifying it has to be null, or uh, not null I mean, so we should be at least fix that error. And uh, there we go, so now we can see one migration was run, uh, and fully executed. If we run this again, Typeform knows that there's no migrations that need to run and it doesn't have to do it again. So it actually keeps track of them for you. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope that helped you. Uh, and you can see kind of the power of migrations in Typeform. I really like how it auto generates these changes. It just makes updating and making the migrations faster. So uh, I hope this was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.